Less than a thousand people live in Earlville, Iowa. Most make their living hog farming. That was the case for Amy and Todd Mullis. The couple owned and operated this sprawling complex that included two hog barns and lived on the property with their three children. The hardworking couple built their business together, but while the business thrived, the relationship did not. Amy began an affair with this man in 2018. Jerry Fraser sold farm supplies to the couple. Initially, when you first started seeing Amy, what kind of things would you talk about in the future? Talked about there was a chance we could end up together. It was the second affair Amy had during her marriage to Todd. And friends and relatives feared that Amy was taking a big risk. When she very first told me the very first day that she was having an affair, I'm, I was so angry at her because I told her, you know, Amy, you're putting yourself in a really dangerous situation. And I said at that time, he is going to kill you. And why did you say that? Because Todd is just a, the person you don't mess with. Amy's brother testified that she wanted to leave Todd and was preparing a move. Amy asked me if she could store um, Grandma's couch and some chairs and lamps at my house um, so that she would have some furniture when she left Todd. But before she could make it happen, on November 10th, 2018, her life was cut short. Her 13-year-old son found her in the shed that morning. She was just inside the door. And what position was she in? She was kind of on her hands and knees, face down. What did you do? Um, I yelled for my dad. Did you see anything that was protruding or sticking out of your mom's body? Yes. What did you see? A uh, corn rake. Todd suggested to first responders that his wife died as a result of an accidental fall on a corn rake, which he removed from her back. I, I just wanted to help her. I just wanted to, let's, let's go to the hospital. Just set her down more or less a little bit in my arm. I just reached over and I pulled the fork out. But a closer look at her injuries led investigators to another conclusion. And in this case, what was the manner of death? Homicide. Dr. Kelly Cruz examined Amy's body and found six puncture wounds in different directions, but just four prongs on the corn rake. What do those different directions indicate to you? To me, they indicate that she would have to be impaled with the rake at least twice. Prosecutors argued Todd killed his wife because he did not want to lose the farm in a divorce and that he was bitter about his wife's infidelity. Prosecutor Maureen Hughes accused Mullis of calling his wife, quote, a cheating whore under his breath during the 911 call. <laughs> Right there, do you say, go to hell, cheating whore? No. Todd Mullis confronted Jerry Frazier about his relationship with Amy Mullis, but Frazier denied having an affair. When you talked to Jerry, did he convince you that there was nothing going on? Yes. I mean, for the most part, yes. He was very convincing. But if not him, who? He and his son were the only two people on the property that day. The only part that you have to decide is if Todd Mullis did it, because certainly she was murdered. The jury deliberated for seven hours over two days and returned its verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Todd Michael Mullis, guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. A conviction of first degree murder in Iowa carries an automatic life sentence. While there is no discretion for the judge in sentencing, Amy's friends and family look forward to the day when they can tell the court what she meant to them. And that was seven months ago. Well, let's bring Chanley Painter in. Uh, Chanley, it's been seven months. What's going on with the sentencing? What's the status? What is it going to happen? Well, it was originally scheduled for March, Vinny, and due to COVID-19 and delay on court proceedings, it is now 
in hopefully July, according to defense attorneys. Now, we must note that Todd Mullis has a new defense team who has filed a motion for a new trial. And so when the sentencing does happen, Vinny, first the judge will have to rule on this motion. The defense filed, the prosecution has responded, and then in Iowa, the mandatory sentence is life without parole. So the judge doesn't really have any discretion. That's what he will be sentenced to if the judge does not grant this motion for a new trial. But Amy Mollis's friends and family will be able to give victim impact statements during that hearing. Yeah, always an important moment for the victim's family. Absolutely. Um, I want to take a listen to that controversial moment where the prosecutor is playing that 911 call and interpreting it one way. Todd Mullis interpreting it a different way. But uh, that could be a basis for this motion for a new trial. Let's take a listen. Now, Todd, here I'm going to um, I'm going to play you the part where you're doing the chest compressions, and I'm just going to ask that you listen in between the chest compressions, okay? <laughs> Todd, do you whisper "cheating whore" right there? No. Okay, I'm going to play another clip for you. <laughs> Holding your the phone and, and doing the compressions at the same time. Yes. You knew you were on a recorded line with a 911 operator. Yes. Do you believe that you said, whispered, cheating whore or go to hell cheating whore while you were doing CPR? No. And I know today you heard some evidence about those whispers on that 911 call. And I'm going to implore you to listen to that 911 call. You can hear the defendant whisper, cheating whore. And if you go at 7, 7.00, 7 you can hear, go to hell, cheating whore. That, uh, Chandler, I remember that moment. That was unreal uh, in the courtroom. But now it may be the basis for, for, a, for a new trial here based upon the defense arguments. Right. It is the first argument they make in the motion for a new trial. And even listening to that again, once you hear her suggest that, it's hard not to hear that maybe what he says under his breath during the 911 call. But, you know, in the prosecution's response to the defense motion lodging this claim of prosecutorial misconduct, saying it was unduly prejudicial that she used this on cross-examination and closing argument, the prosecution says that the jurors told them after the verdict was rendered that they really couldn't agree on what Todd was saying under his breath during the 911 call, if anything, and it was wholly, you know, disregarded in their verdict in the first place. That's, and, and ultimately that's the most important issue, right? You know, what did the jury consider? What didn't they consider? Um, there's another issue involving um, the description of the computer searches. Let's take a listen to some of that testimony. There's another search, same date, January 5th, 2018, at 2.54 in the morning. This is a visited site. So the visited site was truthaboutdeception.com, cheating and infidelity, stats about infidelity, cheating-wife, and then you can see at the, at the bottom, it's, uh, that's how it was typed in. Well, and this is a visited the, 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 site, correct? The, yes. Uh, so that was search for what happens to cheaters in history. And you see there what was actually typed in. Yes, at the bottom you can see the characters that were typed in. And at 1.15 and 34 on that same date of May 10th, 2018, was a site visited? Yes. And what site was that? The making of a cheater. At 1.39 and 22 seconds on May 10th, 2018, was there a visited site? Yes. And what site was that? So it was uh, once a cheater, always a cheater, marriage therapist, way in. And that was a Huffington Post? Yes. On that same date of May 10th, 2018, at, or at 1.43 and 20, was there a search? Yes. And what was the search? Search for what happened to cheating spouses in historic Aztec tribe. All right. So, what are the what are the what's the defense arguing here? Is the basis on these searches? 
They're arguing improper expert testimony coming from that Delaware County deputy right there on the witness stand. And their beef is with, you know, cross-examination was a big deal that he couldn't define UTC, the time code for a lot of these entries on Todd Mullis's iPad. And so the defense is now saying, look, he wasn't supposed to be an expert. He wasn't an expert in this, and therefore that's a ground for a motion for a new trial. And really, Vinny, the jury, when they were deliberating seven hours, had one question, one note, and that was about UTC time. Again, the judge, they didn't, they weren't able to answer that question. It wasn't in the evidence, but again, the state response that Look, their verdict speaks for itself. It was more about what he searched, not when he searched for it. Yeah, to me, I always looked at this case very, very simply, that it was six minus four equals murder. Six holes in her back, only four prongs on a corn rake, so it wasn't an accident. Someone had to do it, either Todd Mullis or his son. His son testified, the jury got to see him, and the jury got to hear from Todd Mullis at the end of the day, so... We shall see. So when's the when, we, we still don't have a date there yet, right? Is that is that how we're hanging on? Defense this right attorneys now? are telling us tentatively July 14th, but there hasn't been that order from the judge making that the court date. I think there it's, it's a little tentative given what the circumstances are right now, but it should be happening this summer.